Man, we're glad to see uh, Sister Vivian back. And uh, we're glad to see uh, Carmen's mom with us. It's always a pleasure when all any of us, when we get together. And the uh, good thing about it is, is that we come together for a purpose. And, and that is to study God's word. God has revealed himself and he has revealed himself through his holy word, through the Bible. Um, I want to say thank the Lord for your prayers. Um, this morning, Lady Deborah was just, just saying, sometimes we just say about being safe on the highways or whatever, but this morning about 7 o'clock, um, on my way to Sherwood, I had to be in Sherwood by 8 this morning for court. Um, and the car just, uh, I guess it must hit some ice or something. And it just started skiing. It wasn't a quick skid. It was it seemed like a very long time. It just was nothing I could do. Uh, I'm thankful that I had learned not to put my feet on the brake. And uh, it eventually it stopped and it straightened up. But if there had been a car coming at that time on the other side, it, it would have been a wreck because I could not uh, navigate. I had no control. I couldn't say how the car is going to go, or how it wasn't going to go. And so I am thankful. Um, it wasn't my time. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't time. But uh, it was a, a scary feeling. It, it really was. But I'm just thankful to the Lord. And if a car had been coming, and uh, that had been the end, it would have been okay. It, it, it would have been okay. Um, it would have been okay. Um, I have been reconciled back under God through the blood of Jesus Christ, and I would have been with the Lord. But, like Paul says, uh, I'm caught betwixt. It, it's uh, better for me that I go and be with the Lord but for you, I really don't have anybody to leave you in the hands of right now. I really don't. And so, uh, as that is, uh, Jack has got her hand up, but I, not, not yet, mother. <laughs> not yet. You still in, you ain't even got the training yet. You're on probation. <laughs> but we're just thankful to the Lord. Uh, this life is... Uh, so uncertain. Um, Herman Cain uh, had four of his campaign workers were today uh, in a wreck, and one of them is same thing, hit some ice, and one of them is dead because a car was coming, and, uh, and the other three. So just like uh, he's dead and I'm alive, it could have been different. Could have been different. But you know, uh, it ain't over until God says it's over. It's not over until God says he's over. And, and that's the reason that it's so important. And I appreciate you, Tish, for playing that song. Because the song was about God. And, and we have got to the place that once we come together, that we want to talk about everything but God. Because our focus, Sister Brenda Brewer, has been so carnal. Uh, we worry so much about uh, ourselves and whether we're going to be comfortable in our own little creature comforts and everything when only it's only God can satisfy and so th that is the reason give me Hebrews 12 please Hebrews 12 we've been talking about I had forgot what we was talking about I said Lord I said what is uh, what are we talking about on Wednesday night and I said, well, I'm not going to even try to figure it out. I'm not going to go back and look. And, and, and God just showed me that we had been talking about how God works. And then he began to, to minister to me. Do any of y'all ever meditate? Yes, meditation is a lost uh, art among the saints. In, in meditation, Sister Brenda Brewer, is, is simply godly thinking. David used to meditate a lot. That's where he came up with the Psalms. It's when you just uh, quiet your mind. Uh, because you'll, believe it or not, and God was speaking to me about this today, believe it or not, 
Your thoughts dictate the quality of your life. Not how much money you make, not who like you, not how beautiful your clothes are, but your thoughts. Because the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so you could be happy with a lot less. It just depends on your thoughts. And so uh, they've done scientific tests, Vivian, that people who think about God are healthier, live longer. Uh, they, they release some type of enzyme inside them. They have a greater joy. Uh, well, you know, God said it himself in Isaiah. He said, he said it, it, it keep your mind stayed on me. He said, no, he said, I will keep them in perfect peace. Who's mine? But you see, everything out here, Crystal, is trying to snatch our mind. Everything outside. And the main thing that tries to snatch your mind is, is uh, are you going to make it? And I, I want you to know that Solomon tells you in Ecclesiastes that money will never satisfy you. Money will never. You can get every bit that your little hand try to grab. And when you get through, you still ain't satisfied. Yeah. James says the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. And now some, you, 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 you live in your life trying to get something that's never going to satisfy you. It's just like most of the folks that are that walking around broken hearted now. When you come to yourself, you'll realize you've been crying about 20 years about nothing. Everybody else know they ain't what you think they are, but you broken hearted. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What are they, mother of none? What are they witnesses of? They are witnesses of God. Now, you cannot be a witness about something if you don't know anything about it. So then our task is, is to learn about God, to know God. Because Daniel says, they that do know their God shall do great exploits and shall be strong and do great exploits. And so it, it was not common Sims the fact that our ancestors had so great an education because they didn't. It was not because they had so much money, because they made it off a whole lot less money than what we have. But what kept them going was their knowledge of God. Now, sometimes in broken English, sometimes it wasn't eloquent, it wasn't put right, but they would put it like this, Mother Nun. They would say, you can't make me doubt him. You see, Satan assaults your thinking pattern to make you think that God is not who he says that he is. You see, God is realer than what you see. And that's the reason he tells us, Brother Jeff, to walk by faith and not by sight. Because how many times have you, uh, has the situation looked one way, but when it all ended up, it was a whole different situation altogether. And that's the reason that God tells us, said, let me be true and let every man be alive. Mother Nun, God tells me tonight, I don't care what the situation look like. I don't care what they said. I don't care what your body look like. I don't care what the situation. You trust me. Trust me. He told Israel, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the fat of the land. The reason they got turned around at Kadesh Barnea was because they looked at the situation. They looked at the situation. God told them, Vivian, he said, look, I brought you out with a mighty hand. And I'm going to go before you and I'm going to drive. I, he said, I'm going to drive the people out. Now he said this, very interesting. He said, I'm not going to drive them out all at once. You see, what I learned, Sister Brenda Brewer, is, is that with God, you must have patience. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just sit down. And that's reading old man Isaiah said, have you not known? Has thou not heard? See, he said, the creator said, they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall, you might be weak right now. But if you can just mother brew a wait on God, if you can just wait, I promise you, the old saints used to say, I double dog daddy. 
to wait on him. Just, just trust him, baby. It ain't like you think it is. It's not like you. But you see, the Bible also tells us, do not become weary in well-doing. God is not the one to give up on. Because he never lost a fight. He's never lost a battle. He hasn't. Now, now, he ain't like me. Some days I go in court, I do good. Some days I don't do too good. I went in there the day, boy, I'm telling you what, I did it to him. I never had a time when I got through talking and the man asked the prosecutor, he said, now, what do you have to say today? She, she dropped her head. She said, I can't say nothing. The judge, the judge said, I said, well, we dismiss all charges. It was full of y'all colored folks out there. It was full of colored folks out there. I went and got my long coat and I walked out. I want to turn around and tell them I'm a bad man. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't do that. I just dropped my head and walked out. But you see, God ain't like us. Now, there's other days that I walk about there, I get whooped ragged. I get whooped ragged. But God never has lost the case. Sometimes it looked like God has. See, that's when you really got to hold on to him. When it looked like God has forgotten you. When it looked like God is never real. When it looked like that you're all by yourself. That's when you got to go and hang on to the horns of the altar and say, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. See, God looking for some old saints that say, I started on this journey a long time ago. Oh, see, I done trusted him too long. I've gone too far with him. Do you understand, Miss Sims? When you walk with somebody too long, say, I can't, I, he done brought me from too far. You will never, under, I couldn't even explain to you all that he has done and where he brought me from. I just have to put it simple and say, the Lord brought me all the way all the way yes, yes. and so then our challenge when you're talking about how God works brother Brimley our challenge is is to find out who is this God who is this God that we are to serve you mean to tell me and and and, and that's the reason that, that Jesus asked Philip when Philip said look you're gonna have to go and everything he said but show us the father suffice it that, that that'll be okay if you just show us the father and Jesus said have I been so long with you 2016 I'm getting ready to know God for myself so, let me tell you something sometimes you can be hindered by trying to take other folk along with you sometimes you can be hindered because you look because you said well why won't they and they, they don't want it baby that's how come I, I, 2016 God been too good for me to put some kind of condition on it God been too good for me to be still crying and it's not about somebody that don't want to go uh, thank you Jesus he says look we, we got so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every Wait, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run okay. with patience. See, 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 God looking for somebody. When you're dealing with God, when you are assured of who He is and what He can do, then you could tell Him, say, God, you know what? Take your time. You, you, you could be just like uh, uh, the centurion. The centurion told, He told him, said, Well, I'm coming to your house. I'm going to go hear your servant. The centurion said, You ain't got to come to the house. He said, What? He said, look, I understand who you are. See, God is looking, Dexter, for somebody who will understand who he is. That's why I'm glad to be at Manasseh because, see, you, you church folks, y'all, you, you get in the way of my father. See, I don't, I don't need you uh, 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 getting in the way, and then I don't need you lying on my father. Like my father is mad with me, and my father's not pleased with me, and my father do, does not love me. And so the man said, I understand who you are. I'm not a member of the nation of Israel. I'm not a member of the covenant of promise. I'm on the outside. I'm a dog, but I see who you are. Have you ever noticed that, that sometimes people that's not even in your family, folks that's not even around you, know you better than folks that you feed every day. Folks that you round every day never recognize who you are. A stranger recognizes you better than your familiar. And the man told him, Jeff, he said, oh, I know who you are. He said, look, I'm a man with authority. If I got a soldier and I tell him to go somewhere, he going to go uh, up on authority. And I know you have the authority and you have the power. And all you got to do is speak the word. If you speak a word, my servant shall be here. 
And uh, Jesus said, I have not seen so great a faith even in the nation of Israel. And they gave him the report, Dexter, when he got back. He said, the same hour that he spoke it, the servant was made whole. Yes. So then, we have to know this God, Brother Arthur, that we're serving. But Jesus, God said at one time, he said through the prophet, he said, when you seek me with your whole heart. What I like about God is, is that he is not like us. You see, the problem that we have with God is, is that we try to make God like us. But you see, the Father is distanced from his creature. There's a difference between the creator and the creature. You can never make both of them the same. We may come back to Hebrew. Let's jump over to uh, Job 42. Let's go over to Job 42 real quick. You see, I, I don't cry about what has happened. Uh, why, 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 why are you spending your whole life reminiscing, uh, being melancholy about what has already happened? Because you see, we know that all things work together for good. And so whatever it happened, I didn't say all things are good. Because now I, I've had some bad things to happen to me. But now, if, even though it was bad, it still got to work for my good. Because the God who uh, rules this earth is sovereign. And God has already, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so now I may not understand everything that happened. I may not understand every condition, Mother Brewer, that I'm working up under right now. And that's the reason I don't have to keep you up at night calling you, telling you about what I'm going through. All right, all right. Because I'm resting and I'm relaxing in the Lord. Uh, Lord, I trust you. Uh, Job, and you see, Job, that was the whole thing. Job thought that he could get help from folks that he had helped. Because Job was a great man, Bildad, Zophar, these were folks that he was in the same fraternity with. Let me put it like that. They were all on the same level, and he thought that now that I'm going through, we can sit around and you can give me some kind of solution. But they had no solution because they were so religious. You see, they had no idea of who the father is. How can someone help you when they don't know who your father is? Because now... Have you ever had folks that, that, that they did not know you, but you got in a situation where y'all just were together? You just, you, you had time and y'all, maybe you took a trip together. Uh, maybe, you know, you just uh, got to know each other. And then did they tell you, say, you know what, you're not like they say you are. You, you, you're, not like, you're not like you say. If you have any kind of confidence, Tara, about yourself, if you got any kind, if, if you have uh, uh, brought your mind up under subjection where you do not allow negative thoughts to rule your walk every day, you see, see the average person going to say you arrogant. They're going to say you think you this or you think you that because, you see, you're not operating up under a slave mentality anymore. You're not operating, you see, when you get a... When you get a revelation of who you are in Christ, then, then you stick out like a sore thumb. How, how dare you? Uh, uh, folk, folks in church get mad even when you say you know you're going to heaven. You know you're going to heaven. I'm like, yeah, baby, you don't know you're going to heaven. Well, I hope I go to heaven. I, I might go to heaven if I do this. And, but, but see, the reason is, is they don't know God. You see, because the way we are with people is that we keep people on a string all their life. All right. and, and the reason we keep them on a string is because we do not operate in perfect love. You see, we do that out of fear because we figure that if I ever let you know that you're okay, then you may go and try to run over me. <laughs> but John says, perfect love casteth out fear. Yeah. And so God operates in such a love. You see, God does not have any type of inferiority complex. God, God is not worried about your assessment of who he is or what he does. God is not worried that because you don't like him, he's not going to be okay. He, he is self-sufficient. He exists by himself. God said at one time, I looked to my left and to my right. I saw no other God beside me. So then God can afford to be bigger. You see, my pastor told me something one time, Pastor Donnell Lindsay in North Little Rock, I never forgot. He told me, he said, Brother Bland, he said, always treat people better than they treat you. 
He said, it'll make you a bigger person. Now, let me tell you this right here. It has been hard, but it has helped me not to sink to the depths of a lot of people that I've been around. Because now, the normal thing for a human being is, is that you kill my dog, I kill your cat. But in order for you to be victorious, in order for you to, to live in holiness, and holiness is simply uh, allowing God's attributes to work through you. You must walk in a level of love where you don't treat people like they treat you. Job says, in Job, what I said, Job 42? Let me get over there. Let me get over Job. Job 42. <laughs> he gets to the last chapter. God has, he, he has cried out. He's talked about his suffering. He said, Mother Minnie, that man that's born of a woman is, is, is full of trouble. His days are short. As sure as the sparks fly upward, the man can't dodge trouble. And, but God stops him and asks him some questions and asks him, where were you? Uh, you want to question me without really knowing who I am. You see, there's a difference of knowing about God and knowing of God. You see, you can study the Bible. You can go to seminary and you can learn about God. Take your time. I'll run up out of Take here. Your time. But you don't know of God Take your time. until you get a personal experience right. with him. Right. You know, you 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 don't that's what Mother Nun said, you don't know God like I know. But see, it ain't you don't know of God out of Bible study. Take your time. You know of God by trying. You got to try. There's a difference between reading and having some personal experience with God. When, when you get down to nothing and you still won't take down, you, still, you tell the Lord, Lord, if, if, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. I know that you're going to make a way. I don't know how and I don't know when. But I know you brought me too far to leave me. And when God shows up and shows out, when the very folk they put their nose up. And we, I, I know I got about 20 folks in there right now. They used to put their nose up when they saw you. And they ain't never had what you got now. Never lived a life. Never been. A, you don't do no bragging about it or nothing, but you living good. And you got enough sense to know you didn't do it. And they, that really make them mad, Andre, when you, when you tell them, say, it's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my, thank you, Jesus. So then Job says, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Look what he says in verse 5. I have heard of thee. You see, before Job went through his trial, not everybody, but just about three, four, look at somebody and say, I thank God for my trial. I thank God for my trial. See, I'm not defeated. My trial, look at somebody else and tell them, say, my trial didn't defeat me. My trial didn't defeat me. See, and, and, and the reason I know my trial didn't defeat me is, is that I can go down the street and you can't look at me and tell what I've been through. You ain't got no idea what I've been through, baby. I ain't finna hold my head down crying about nothing. My God can and will. He left me here. He left me here as a testimony to tell somebody else, baby, you ain't got to give up. You ain't got to give. You're a prime candidate. You are prime. When you get at your lowest point, that's when you are prime candidate for my God. I tell y'all all the time, I ain't got no uh, Sunday school God. I got a pig pen God, Dexter. I got a God that you can't get too nasty for. So you know, y'all did y'all know y'all can get too nasty for church folk? Well, honey, I just, honey, I can't. I just, I don't know. Well, you know what? That's good. It's good. Have you ever had folks to leave you so the right folk can come in? You whine and cry about them leaving, baby. They had to leave so the right one could step in. 
That's reading David said in Psalm 27 said, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take up my stand. I can't lose. There is no way I can lose. As long as God sits high and looks low, as long as he's on the throne, I can't lose. Because God has already ordained. That he is a God that knows the, the end from the beginning. Nothing sneaks up on God. It may sneak up on me. God already knew Brother Corman Sam. Now, I, I had had uh, 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 Tara's brother, a uh, frat brother, Secret had. He had texted me the night before. I thought it was real loving and sweet of him. He texted me and told me, he said, frat night. He said, be careful on that road. He's a state trooper. He said, be careful on that road going to Sherwood in the morning. He said, because uh, there, those bridges and stuff ice up. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, you know, my car ain't been sliding. I ain't looking for it to slide. I ain't looking for it to slide, you know. And I ain't crazy. I'm driving, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. I'm not driving no 70, 80 like some of y'all. You know, but even driving my best, the car still swerved. But I'm so glad that it wasn't nothing that sneaked up on God. Because now, even though it started telling, God had his hand on it. Mama wasn't nowhere. Daddy wasn't nowhere. Wife was at home. Couldn't nobody, couldn't none of y'all help me. But God stepped in. He's a God that deserves. He deserves my trust. So you can't trust everybody. You can't trust everybody. You can't trust. You got to, you got to earn my trust now. Just God, I don't know you that well in order to trust you. Yeah, I, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt till I find you out. Now, I'm not just paranoid when I first come up on you. I, I'm not one of those people that's just looking at everybody cross-eyed and with all that. But now... I can't trust you till I know you. Amen. But now you ought to have somebody in your, in your life. You ought to have somebody yes, that you can trust. Yes, sir. That you've given them something and they was faithful with it. Yes, now once that I've given you something in me and found faithful with it, now I trust you. Uh-huh. You know you do that sometimes. You just give them a little bit of information and see where you're going to hear it. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if it come back to you, you know I can't give you no more. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He says, look at verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye see of thee. And what he's saying is, Arthur, is now I understand who you are. And that's what's so beautiful about grace. Grace changed everything. Amen. You see, they gave us a viewpoint of God that God was like us. If you do good, then God will be good to you. That you have to perform in order for God to love you. And see, when you're trying to know somebody, you're trying to know, well, what pleased them? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what make them angry? What is it that, that causes them to have displeasure? And, and y'all had God, such a grumpy old man. That, 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 <laughs> He wouldn't let me hear. I couldn't listen to no Scarface or nothing. Here I am. I went for, for a decade. Well, back in the 80s, I don't know. It, it was a decade. I don't even know what the music was because I couldn't listen to it. <laughs> when y'all bring it up now, some of them some Tony Terry, Terry, them folk, Tony Tony and all that. I ain't hear none of that. <laughs> they, they, they wouldn't let me listen to none of that. But Lord, when I broke out, I listened to everything. <laughs> They, but now grace changed all that because, and one thing grace did was grace brought you to your father Amen. you said what you mean to tell me that you that you love me that's how come that you always end up going home when you mess up you go out there you think you're grown my granddaddy used to say, put it like this right here mother brewer said you get to smell it yourself I don't know what that means but you done heard it too and, and, and you mess up and you end up right back in the house. You, you walk right on back in that bedroom. That, you <laughs> that bed feel good, too. Because you know that, that there ain't nobody finna come in there and snatch you up out that bed. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing to you in that bed. You welcome. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, there's love there. Yeah. Right. You're at home. Mm -hmm. And you go back to that when things get rough. Well, grace lets me know 
that my father does not love me based upon anything that I do. But he loves me because of what he did. He makes me acceptable because of the unthinkable gift that he did, came down and died in my place. And when he did that, he did that as a satisfaction to himself. Where that now all wrath he has in his sin has been satisfied. And so now I am accepted in the beloved. So he says, I heard of thee, but now mine eyes see, wherefore I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Give me Genesis 18 and 14. Who is this God? I got a message on YouTube. I know you probably heard it. You was here when I preached it, but it said they lied to us. They lied to us. Ain't, ain't nothing worse than somebody lied to you about your daddy. Because you're going to need your daddy. Look for, you're going to need him so, sooner or later because that's where you came from. You try to get by without him. But you can't get by without him. Sooner or later, you have to uh, make that connection with your father where you came from. Whether your father wants you or not. You still got to make that connection because that's where you came from. And y'all had me going to church. I hated church. Y'all had me going to church, and you had me serving somebody that didn't love me. Because you don't love me. If, if all the time you love me is when I'm doing good, you don't love me. You love what I do. You don't love me. But if, and what they do is, they keep you away from the word. You see, God has communicated to you through his word. And if you ever got his word, then you wouldn't believe him. There's no way that you're going to believe a lying preacher when you got God's word. You're going to take God's word. So they keep you away from the word. They keep you busy working in the church. They keep you doing other things. Okay, let me give you a good example. It's just like if you're in a relationship with a man who really ain't no good for you, he don't want you to talk to your mama, your sister, nobody. He don't, he don't want you to talk to nobody that's going to give you no good sense. He really don't want you talking to nobody but him. Because he wants to brainwash your mind that he the only somebody that you need to listen to. He the only somebody that care about you. Your mama and them don't care about you. And your mama and them thinking, Lord have mercy. How are we going to get this fool away from this <laughs> From this man, because he just he taking all of money, he won't let her go nowhere, he got her all messed up. And it's the same way that we've been done in the church. This religious system has taken us away from God and does not want us to know God. God is not like what they taught us. Now I want to say they're doing it out of ignorance, but all you got to do is pick the Bible up. Right. And then if you don't know, why do you have a microphone standing up there talking about you teaching folk? Sit down and let somebody teach that know what they're talking about. Amen. So they're crippling folk. And the thing about it is, is that when, when you make people like that, then they make other folk. And when somebody comes that has the truth, the devil rises up in them. Have you ever noticed that? That when you start telling people about grace that are caught up in this religious system, Seem like they get mad enough to fight, don't they? It's not just me. You've had that experience too? You can't even talk to folks in your family about it. Like, no, nah, don't, don't even worry about it. But it's the truth. What did I tell you? Genesis what? 18 and 14. Let's look at that. We almost through. Genesis 18 and 14. And people say sometimes, well, you y'all think you think y'all church the only church that everything you don't, I'll go anywhere. If you're gonna tell me the truth about my dad. Amen. I ain't stuck on no building. I ain't stuck on no folk. No. I feel like everybody the same. I ain't a dime with a difference between people. I don't care if you're short, tall, black, white, man, female, or whatever. But I'm just I need to know the truth about God. Yes. Because you see, what you think about someone is how you treat them. And so all this old foolishness about where well, we serve the same God and everything. How we serve, okay, let me ask you this. 
Do you think they're teaching the same thing at Harvard that they're teaching at uh, Barden Elementary? No. And the thing about Harvard is, is that they, they're not bragging about how many students they got. In fact, they say we only going to let so many folks in. Exactly. So it's not about how many folks y'all got. It's about, it's about the quality of the curriculum. You get that? What are you being taught? Are you being taught the truth? Or are you just being misled? Can you show me what you're saying in the Bible? Or is this just something to get me emotionally charged? You know, I ain't never seen black folk holly that had no problem being emotional. We get emotional about clipping our toenails. We ain't got no problem about being emotional. We some emotional folk. Shoot, put on that right music. That been 40 years ago. They, they, they put on the first note to that song, uh, 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 Let's Get It On by Mom. Go, oh, Lord, that's my song. <laughs> so emotion is not my problem. My problem is, is that uh, uh, not living in a shroud of ignorance and darkness. You see, ignorance is always characterized as darkness. And knowledge is characterized as light. And that's the reason. And then I don't trust people when you don't want me to know better. Emmy, right. that's got to be a reason that you want to mislead me. Why you don't want me to know the truth? Why you don't want me to have a better life? And a better life is not a higher salary necessarily. A better life is not a prettier woman. A better life is not a prettier car. A, a better life is not everybody patting you on your back. But, but, but a better mind is peace mm -hmm. and joy yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes. So now, what did I say? Genesis what? 18 and 14. Let's, let me go up to 9. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Here in Genesis, God is revealing himself. And God reveals himself, uh, Mother Sam's, through situations. He wants to show as we find out in Romans, the fourth chapter, that just as impossible as it was for people that old to have a child, it's just that impossible for man to please God outside of Jesus Christ. His works will never be good enough. And Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, brings it into our plain view that as Abraham and Sarah were impossible for them to have a child, so it is for our works to please God. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Mm -hmm. You see, but wake up, I know you don't fix a lot of hair today. <laughs> I was speaking of bug, I saw bug, I do like remember. <laughs> you see. <laughs> You see, God here wants to show that Sarah was after them. In other words, there was no humanly possible way. And so now, Mother Brewer, God wants to give us a, a little insight into what kind of God that he is. You see, the saints have forgotten that we, Back before we got so interested in how good we were doing, we used to want to know about God. And, and, we have, and because we have focused so much on our way of being, we have lost sight of who God is. You see, God does not need anything to work with. I had nothing that would qualify me to go to law school. My history was that of a drug addict. I was on crack. 
I had no money. My wife had no money. My parents had no money. I couldn't buy a book. My grades were such that I had 53 hours of Fs. There was nothing that would qualify me to say, well, you're a good candidate for law school. But now, but, but I had a mom that had taught me about God. Mm. That now, because you start in the trailer house, don't mean that's where you have to end up. You because you don't have anything does not mean that God has forsaken you and that God can't take you. Many times, God takes nothing so that he can show that it was him. Because if you had something to start with, then you think that you had some part in what happened. And so the Bible says that Sarah had, was not after that. She was not a candidate for having a child. That was all over. So the Bible says, therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. You see, God is just ridiculous. And that's what you have to realize. God is just ridiculous. That's the reason that it's foolish to try to explain God to a non-believer. And sometimes I say stuff to church folks just to figure out, are you a believer or unbeliever? You do know you have unbelievers that go to church every Sunday. But they don't believe. They don't believe that this Bible is God's word. They think that the, the, the white man took it and, and wrote it and this that, and they think that it's been tampered with. They don't think God got enough power to preserve his word. They're unbelievers. Uh -huh. But now, the thing about it is, the reason you know God did it, because it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's right. Whatever we can do, God don't have to do. No, that's true. But now, this was a situation, Brother Brimley, that was out of hand. <laughs> now, I don't want you to clown. But you, I just want you to think about just one thing that God did. That it wasn't no way. It wasn't no way. Just one thing. No wonder it is that the old lady cried out one time and said, you know what? If the Lord don't do nothing else for me. You see, poo -poo, sometimes God, sometimes you can deal with somebody that's so trustworthy. That really, they ain't got to do nothing else to show you. To say, it's, just, it's just like your mom. See, see, your mom ain't got to do nothing else. She ain't got to buy you nothing for your birthday. She ain't got to show up or do nothing in order for you to believe she loved you. She got a history of showing you that she loved you. And it's the same way with God. You see, you have to get intimate with God. This ain't about us coming and getting intimate with the pastor. This ain't about us coming getting intimate with MCL for all is right. This is about me becoming intimate with God. Because when I know God, then it's easier for me to trust God through the hard spots. And the hard spots are coming, y'all. The hard spots are coming. Sometimes just the powers and the principalities begin to fight your mind. Ain't nothing wrong. You got money. You got this, that. But, but, your, but old demons start to come back. Depression starts to set in. Your suicide thoughts start to come in. And discontent. And it, it is those times that your ability to recall who God is right. will take you through. Because now, this, this, this is a, sometimes it's a secret storm. Sometimes it's a, you don't need to tell everything. I'm not that preacher to tell you, you supposed to go everywhere to all the church folk telling that you're baby, because some of it will hurt you worse than it will help you. Because, baby, you don't want to hear that no more. And some stuff is just too juicy for folk to keep. Okay? Some stuff just too juicy. Because what did they say? I just got, I'm going to just tell one person. And then they're going to tell three. Some stuff just need to be between you and God. Some stuff you need to trust God with and say, God, you know what? They can't do nothing about it no way. And I'm going to put it in your hand. And I'm going to believe because you've been so faithful. I'm just going to believe that you know what you're doing. Give me two or three more minutes. He says, uh, therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. You see, 
we didn't get nearly where I was wanting to go tonight, but that's okay. Uh, I have to take the limits off of God. Limits off of God. I, I, I see y'all doing that, and I, I admire you very highly. I, I use Nikki as an example. I tell Lady Deborah all the time. I just am just very impressed with, with her. Nikki is single. She's a single mother. She's a single mother. And she really ain't that old. I think 30 something or something like this. It's a kid. But she hadn't kept, she don't think she is, but you know you ought to be. But, you know, she has let none of that, I don't, you know, she smiles all the time. Mm -hmm. She don't let none of that, her situation, keep her from driving and stuff. When, when her daughter finished high school, her daughter went to college just like everybody else's all daughter. Right. You, you, you see? Amen. See, you, you have to take the limits off of God. You, you see? You have to understand that God not going to do anything for somebody else that he won't do for you. He got, he, he, it just God just ain't that kind of God. And it has nothing to do with your resources or whether or not you can afford it or whatever. I promise you God will do it. I, I promise you will God go. But you got to be patient. You got to wait on him. And you got to trust God. And, and you, can't, you can't do like Joseph. You can't tell folks about your dream. Because all they're going to do is shoot it down. I told one guy, I told him, I said, man, I think I'm going to go to law school. He said, what you going to law school? They ain't got no, no crack pipes in law school. Now, he, next day, he in physical therapy school. And me and him drank together now. But I was just a fool. I wasn't ever supposed to have nothing or nothing. I, I wrote some of my fraternity brothers, the ones I pledged up on there, Russ College and Holly Springs, yesterday. I wrote them and invited them to my birthday party. Uh, since they always invite me to come to their parties and whatever, I called me. I, I haven't heard from one of them. I haven't heard from one of them. You see, my line brother told me one time, one time, you know, my line name was Fleabag. I was Fleabag. Because I was drunk all the time. I wore the same jeans the whole time I pledged. Y'all wouldn't have known me, not like I am now. But my line brother told me, he said, man, they never expected you to be nothing. You wasn't supposed to do nothing. But see, they didn't know the house that I came out of. They didn't know. A lot of times, a lot of times people look at you where you are. And they don't know what's within you. They don't know that, that you are not at this time reflecting the greatness that was within you. I was tougher than all of them all, all the time. It's just that my mind. It's just that the negativity and the things that I had led. But you see, God is so faithful. Yes. That God will let you go through the move. All right. Just to let you know that ain't where you want to be. Right. You see, if you ain't never been somewhere, you don't really know what it is. But he says, I'm going to let you go. He says, uh, Carl Ray, I think you're right. Carl Ray texted me the other day. He said, man, you're the realest brother I know. I'm just like Drake. Bro. I just want you to keep it 92 plus 8 with me. Y'all know about that. <laughs> I done got free. I can listen to the music and everything. I ain't know what was going on. I ain't hard to know who Michael Jackson was. <laughs> he says, <laughs> after I am waxed, and look at verse 32. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Uh -huh. Saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Uh -huh. And he asked this question. Which is to call into question, do you really know who I am? Is there anything? Clap your hands for me. 